Hello and good day to you. This is Limping Through Models with me, Nathan, and I am before a messy workbench. But I say a messy workbench is a productive workbench, and I have been productive for the past couple of weeks with other models outside of the Campbell's uh, Grandma's House build, which I will get to here in a few short moments. But I want to show you show off a little something I've been working on here, and this is a uh, an HO scale model of a breakdance carnival ride. Uh, brought to you by our friends over at uh, Faller in Germany. They have a huge line of carnival rides that uh, I really like to get my hands on, but that's going to take time because these things are over $100 a piece, even more. So it's going to take some time to, I guess, uh, scrounge up the capital to purchase these items. But this one right here I bought stateside at a hobby shop outside of Charlotte, North Carolina called Chuck's Toy Trains. I recommend you check it out because if there is a template for what a hobby shop should look like, Chuck's is that template. And I wish, I really wish I had something like that around where I live, but I digress. That's where I got this for $100 and he has a whole bunch of other uh, fall or carnival kits that you can purchase at the hobby shop, which is like blowing my mind because I thought these were elusive items you only could get online through eBay auctions or things like that, or have to, you know, pay exorbitant amounts of shipping to get it over here from Germany. But he had them, and I struck while the iron's hot, and I took it. So this is what I've been working on, in addition to Grandma's house. And so in this episode, I'm going to show you what I've done with uh, the house. Uh, I did a little bit more painting. In fact, here is what the end result is going to look like. Whoa. The end before the beginning, what is this? Regardless, we have windows, we have glass in the windows, we have the inside painted black. I'm going to put some uh, some dividers on the inside as well, but not in this video. Um, so in the meantime, let me show you how I got to this point right now. Like I mentioned in my last video, I was going to take the bottom of the house and photocopy that so I'd have an accurate uh, template to use for various things to do with the deck planking foundation of the whole house overall. And so I get this cut out and line it up with the bottom of the house, uh, make sure everything is lined up as it should be. And it's pretty close to where, where it should be and I'm happy with it. I check it against the planking to make sure, uh, face down of course, because that's the, uh, the proper orientation of the bottom. However, I wanted to have a more definitive template for what I needed to cut out of that decking. So I decided to use the house as that template. After I square up three of the four edges, I take clothespins to attach the house to the decking so that it doesn't move when I do the tracing. With my cutting template in place, I trace out the areas of the decking I need to cut out. Uh, this will be the right front and the back rear the house. The opposite corners of the house are going to be the actual front and back deck of the house that will need additional framing later. Once I get everything traced out I take the house off of the decking so I actually have some room to, to cut and I use a straight edge to cut along the lines I just drew. So the first part is cut out. I'll need to save that wood for later. And now I check it against the uh, actual front of the house and everything lines up as it should. So I'm surprised I did such a fine job of cutting this out. Next is the other edge of the decking that needs to be cut. It's a back corner, so it's like a square. And I check that and it looks good too. The back of the house overhangs on the back part of the decking. So I have to add some additional wood to the back decking area. Uh, to accommodate that overhang. So I decided I was going to just add wood to it and then cut away uh, because I tried to just add the cut pieces to it and it just didn't line up properly. So if I do it this way I think it's going to be a little better. So I'm going to glue the pieces on uh, individually and then wait for it to dry being sure to weigh it down so as not to warp anything. Once dry, I slap on some masking tape to avoid any sort of uh, splintering when I try and cut this. And I notch each end um, of the wood with my X-Acto knife. 
and then line up the notches with a straight edge and just keep cutting and 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 cutting gently until it is free and not splintered at all. Now it's time to flip the deck over to trace out the foundation. I'm taking that piece I photocopied and putting dots at all the points uh, against that photocopied bottom of the house. And then playing some connect the dots to connect these points together to uh, create a, a line for the foundation to follow. And one other thing I need to do is, is leave about a sixteenth of an inch gap uh, between the edge and the line where the foundation is going to be to leave room for the eventual stone facade. I decided I was going to freehand the cutting of this instead of using my chopper. Uh, so these uh, 1 4 inch pieces of wood, I just uh, nick out uh, each side of that wood until I eventually get to the point where it's uh, cut all the way through. And then sand it flat to um, give it a nice flat surface for other pieces to butt up against. And then use super glue to glue that on the line. And the progress of this is coming along pretty well. Uh, again, just kind of freehanding some of the... Uh, the angles on this using some additional super glue to reinforce the, the foundation and then sanding some of the edges and sides of it flat so that there's a nice flat space for the uh, stone facade to uh, place on. And then checking that against the house and so far it's looking pretty good. It's a lot better than what it was that's for certain. The kit comes with a sheet of plastic that has a brick pattern pressed into it and the instructions call for you to cut out strips that are two blocks high. Uh, these strips are going to be wrapped around the bottom of the foundation and you don't need the whole piece of plastic. I found that I only needed actually two strips of uh, this cutout to completely wrap the foundation of the house. The plastic rock strip is not completely one-fourth of an inch tall, maybe just a little taller. So there's going to be some uh, shaving that needs to happen to get this to sit flat. So I use super glue on the foundation to affix these plastic uh, strips to that wood. And this process took a lot of time. I mean, truthfully, it took me probably three or four nights to uh, get this rock facade attached to the foundation to the point where I felt that it was solid and completely attached and uh, this was something that I could not rush. Uh, there was a lot of hurry up and hold and just waiting for things to cure. Once I felt my starting point was sufficiently affixed to the wood I continued to wrap the plastic around the foundation. I wanted to continue this glue and clamp process for the entire foundation using some clothespins I had, but the bottoms of the clothespins were not flat, so I decided to take a Dremel to it in an effort to flatten the bottom so that it would lay flush against the foundation. The only problem was I snapped the bit of my Dremel in trying to do the first one uh, that I was going to flatten and I kind of got cold feet because that could have been my eye or something that I knocked out. So I just decided to take it slow after this and just take my time making this foundation. And after a couple nights of patience I finally have a foundation that has a brick facade attached to it and is ready for paint. After, of course, I sand it down to make sure the plastic is not overhanging and making sure the overall deck is flat. The next thing I decided to do was paint the innards of the house with a color called Lamp Black. I am not sure what that is. Maybe it's like a street lamp black, because uh, last time I checked, all the lamps I have in my house are not black. So, whatever. All I know is that it is a black color, 
and it's a color I chose to paint the inside of the house. So I carefully paint the walls and all the crevices that I can get into, and then I take a larger brush uh, to paint the second floor uh, as well. And eventually I'm going to create some partitions inside this house that I'll slip into the first and second floor so that you can't see completely through the house uh, from any one angle. Unless that one angle happens to be what I consider its own room. And so that's the top floor complete and blacked out. And then I go to work on the bottom floor as well using the same sort of concepts. Just being careful to not get paint where it's not supposed to be. Uh, painting the bottom floor as well. Making sure the whole inside of the house is black. There was some additional touch-up I needed to do, so I blebbed a little bit of paint onto the top of the paint cap just so I can get some to work with to touch up some areas here and there that was showing some too much white or a little bit of wood. Uh, while doing this, I realized that the bay window on the front was not completely attached to the wall that it was attached to, so I had to uh, get some super glue back into that wall and, and get it back in place and make sure everything was square so that it would uh, fit back on the, the decking once it gets attached to it. And for as careful as I was painting the inside of the house black, I did get some of that paint on the outside and that took a couple coats to cover up completely. I'm at a place now where I want to put the windows on the house. Uh, I'm starting to peel the windows off of this paint stick with the double-sided tape and realize that it's really difficult. I'll probably not use the double-sided tape again. Uh, I'll probably just go back to the uh, masking tape um, on these sticks as opposed to the double-sided tape. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm sanding the backs of these windows because when I was painting, uh, some of the paint dried to where it was fanning out past the uh, plastic pieces. So there was uh, residual paint on some of the door frames and window frames and that sanding uh, took care of most of that. So now I'm trying to get some glue out of the uh, glue bottle, which is really hard because it's tacky glue and it just likes to sit at the bottom until you force it down. Now I'm applying glue to you know, maybe four corners of each window and then affixing it to the model uh, in the places that they need to be. For all the work I did in sanding the edges of those bay windows, uh, they still didn't quite fit in some instances. So instead of sanding the windows, I decided to sand the actual insides of uh, the bay windows, sanding the wood to get it to a point where it would fit. And eventually I got to that point and the windows fit on those sides quite well. And so this is the house with all the windows in place, all the doors as well. And it's looking like an actual house and I'm really liking how it's looking so far. The window glazing had a weird uh, ripple in it uh, in the kit that I received. But thankfully this wasn't my first attempt at this model so I had a second kit that had a nice flat piece of glazing for the windows. So I'm measuring out the bay windows and they're probably about an inch by inch in size and so I take my X-Acto knife and cut that out. I swear there is a piece of glazing there that I'm cutting. I'm not just cutting the board. And so I go back to wasting time getting some tacky glue out from the bottom of the bottle, which is taking its sweet time, of course. There you are. And then I dab a little bit on each corner of the window. And I find my piece of glazing that I set aside and cleaned off and took some pliers, or tweezers rather, and put that in place uh, on that window. And that's what I did for most of the other windows as well. I'm not much of a tweezers guy, but I found that they were very helpful with getting the window glazing into this model. And now we have the model with the windows in place and the glazing behind the windows, and probably ready for uh, for some roofing and maybe some foundational work. We'll see. 
like, comment, subscribe. Three words you hear way too much at the end of these sorts of videos. But without those likes, without those comments, without those subscriptions, what point is there to continue doing this? I'll tell you why. Because I need an outlet. This is my outlet. And I'm sharing that outlet with everybody here. So we have a completed exterior of the house. We're starting on the foundation. And in the next episode, we're going to paint the foundation. We're going to start with the roof. And I think that's probably it for that video. That should be enough content. When that video comes, sooner hopefully, rather than later, but that's not for me to decide. That's for life to decide. And so until then, as I said at the beginning of this diatribe, like, comment, subscribe, and do everything you need to do to get to the next video where I throw the roof on this, finish the painting of this, and hopefully have a house that would only need some uh, additional accoutrements to be complete. Until then, see you next time.